Welcome to Pastor Andrew's Inspirations. If you enjoy these videos, please click on the red subscribe button below and the bell for more. Welcome to our online church, a congregation made up of many from around the world. No offering is necessary. Subscribing and watching videos will keep us alive under God's watchful eyes. It's normal to feel an ebb and flow of brilliance or impulse throughout our lives, particularly when we are going through a more difficult period that makes it hard to feel revived. We must never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. We must be faithful in every small thing because it is in those small things that our true strength lies. Remember. Remember who we are. Don't compromise for anyone, for any reason. We are children of the Almighty God. We must live that truth with Him helping us. God will meet us wherever we are in order to take us where He wants us to go. Faith does not get rid of questions, but faith knows where to take them. There is no one who is unimportant in the perseverance of God. If we can't fly, then we should run. If we can't run, then we should walk. If we can't walk, then we should crawl. But whatever we do, we must keep moving forward with Christ. God does not give us what we want, but what we need. He does, however, meet His promises, leading us along the best and truest paths to Himself. We never grow closer to God when we just go through life. It takes careful searching and focus. The Christian life is an ongoing concern in which God leads us into ever-changing experiences. We find that throughout the Old and New Testaments. The underlying call is to follow the Lord into new adventures. In the Old Testament, we find that time and again God's people are challenged to take some kind of risk. But it is always with the understanding that God will accompany them through the unknown future. In the life of Abraham, we find that God said to him, Get out from your people and from your father's house and go into a new land that I will show you. That is not a very comforting or sensible idea for a man who was by then in middle life and who had established himself quite well in the Euphrates Valley. But Abraham obeyed God and so the great saga of faith begins. Later in the Old Testament we see Moses leading the post-captivity Israelis out of Egypt. They had grumbled against God and we find them sitting at the foot of the mountain where God has given them His law. Again, the call comes. Get up and leave this place for you have sat at the foot of this mountain long enough. All throughout the Old Testament histories and prophecies, 
there is an immediate call to answer the impelling urge to move on, to get up and get going. In the New Testament, the call is similar, but it is more speculative in nature, for the stage is altered from the physical mobility to the progression of the spirit of man under the leadership of the Spirit of God. We find the disciples of Jesus being led about from one experience to another under the leadership of our Lord. Each experience is one that has a physical and a spiritual lesson embedded in it. There is always a parable or a picture or a predicament that leads them nearer and nearer to the true light, wherein God is the center of all things. The underlying call to the disciples and other followers of Jesus Christ is very simple. Follow me. But Jesus doesn't leave it there. He says, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men to the fishermen of Galilee. He says to Nathanael, who had asked if any good ever came out of Nazareth, Behold, an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. To Matthews, he calls and asks him to follow him away from the taxation tables and into a new life of freedom and service to others. St. Paul, writing of his own spiritual struggle, says, I count not myself to have grasped the whole re revelation of Jesus Christ. But this one thing I do, forgetting the things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the calling on high of Jesus Christ my Lord, for whom I have lost every worldly possession, and I scorn them, and count them less than garbage, that I may gain Christ, and be found in him, not dressed in my religio-legal righteousness, but in the righteousness which is given to me by God through faith. That's a tall aspiration, but it is the very essence of what this business of following Jesus is all about. If we want to grow in the knowledge of God, and to progress in the matter of development in body, soul, and spirit, there are certain things that we must do. We must regard the past as being gone and we must be willing for change in every area of our lives. Forgetting those things that are behind me I press on. The past is always a jumble of good and bad, of hurts and joys, and of hopes and disappointment. The past has its share of sins too. But all of this must be shed if we are to get on with the business of growing richer and more fully alive in the in intangible riches of God. Sometimes we look back on the past and tremble. We realize that there are lurking shadows that will infect our future if they are not dealt with. When we try to deal with the past ourselves, we find ourselves caught in an attic full of treasures and trifles and cobwebby by fears and half-remembered dreams. The past, my dear friend, has nothing that it can give to us other than memories which were we to enter a time machine and be whisked back to that period of life might not be as benign or kind as we have remembered them to be.
our Lord Jesus Christ is the one who transcends time he is the same yesterday today and forever he stands as really beside the hurt of yesterday as he does beside the happiness of today it is to him who is the light of the world that we must see the right to take away the past with all of its sin and sorrow we must at once ask that he remove the sins and hell must to take some meaning form the bitterness of the cup that we drank back then this you see is precisely why Calvary and Easter and the Ascension all happened it was not only necessary that Christ should live and suffer and die but that he should rise again from the dead so that God might justify us from every stain of sin God does not see us as people with the past but as souls for whom his son gave his life and for whom he raised him from the dead behold that manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us Christ St. Paul that we should be called the children of God Calvary covers it all my past with its sin and its stain my present guilt and despair Jesus took on him there and Calvary covers it all when my dad was a child he lived in the country of Ireland one of his better streaks was a habit of picking flowers for his grandmother of course he did not know the difference between flowers and weeds many a time he would run to her with an extensively picked bunch of flowers and always when he came in after playing or doing the little chores a boy had to perform she would have the flowers in a vase but the bunches were always smaller than before his grandmother you see could tell the difference between which were flowers and which were weeds God in his mercy does this with our bejumbled past when we are willing to leave all with him we also must be willing for new adventures in our present experience we are part of an ever-changing world we have only to examine the progress that has been made in science to be able to acknowledge that fact we have invented many helpful tools to make work easier communications faster and life more bearable than our fathers and mothers ever knew the cell phone is a good example this wasn't done by holding tenaciously to what had come before or by sticking rigidly to what had been believed to be true in the past rather it was done by men and women who had the high spirit of adventure who dared to test the past by the empirical possibilities of the present and who courageously applied themselves to the task of making the world more palatable for us all in the life of the spirit we participate in a challenging and uplifting milieu God wants us to be aware that we are precious to him that we can trust him that we can respond to him best by living on the growing edge of his purpose for us as people of God collectively and individually 
To do this, we have to be open for change. We must be willing to let go of the past broken dreams, which have outgrown their luster. We must love people with our hearts and not as a possession. Too often we become possessive of a person or of a thing so our joy or misery is determined by smile or frown or by function or malfunction. This makes us too concerned and controlled by outward relationships to, pro to objects. We need to reacquaint ourselves with God, the never altering source of life and health. And every good which we are privileged to enjoy. The hymn writer has scraped the knob of our concerns when he wrote, Our restless spirits yearn for thee, wherever our changeful lot is cast. Pleased when thy gracious smile we see, glad when our faith can hold thee fast. Yet life in the will of God isn't so simple as that. Abandoned to the will of God, desire to be growing up into the whole person in Jesus Christ, must contain a willingness to trust God in the dark if necessary. We know all about dark places in this life. We may have felt the hand of death enter our lives. We may have suffered long darkness over griefs of varying degree, perhaps the loss of a loved one, or the loss of a job, or a lover, or the loss of our cherished possession, has brought our head to the grief-stained pillow, wet with our tears. Like Jonah in the whale's belly, we may cry. Thou hast cast me into the deeps, and the seaweed rose above my head. I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again towards thy holy temple. These experiences are the definition, or the definitive pointers, to where our faith is set. We must turn our hearts, and see where they repose themselves when depression strikes or loneliness disappears. Like David, we find that the heart is deceitful, but if God is living in us, we cry, return, return to your rest, O my soul. For the Lord thy God hath dealt bountifully with thee. Thomas More, the Irish poet, writing his immortal, Believe me, if all those endearing young charms, has a segment in the last verse where he writes of the sunflowers, who turns to her God when he sets, the same look that she gave when he rose. There is a very real sense in which the Christian soul must be much like a sunflower, when trouble strikes or when evils loom across our sky, we must ever turn with faith to the one in whom there is no variableness, neither a shadow of turning. In such a spiritual position, one can readily accept the mutability of this mortal scene. With such a faith, one can say to God, Thou wilt show me the path of life through all the darkened maze, and I trust in thee. If we would go on growing with God's help, we must say a profound yes to the future and all that it holds for us. For those who are young, it's not hard to be accepting of the future, but for those of us who are in middle to later life, it's not so easy to be, to be thrust from the comfortable to the unknown. 
Yet, my dear brothers and sisters, this is precisely the challenge that lies before us. St. Paul says of this, Forgetting the things which are behind, I reach out joyfully to the things which are ahead of me. What do you mean, Paul? How can you reach out to martyrdom? How can you reach out to prison? How can you reach out to all the things you have to suffer? We may ask. I think that the Apostle would reply, Because it is the will of God, and I must follow that will without question, and without interruption, and above all, with joy. It takes faith to live in a world where everything is moving faster than we can easily conceive. Yet if we are willing to follow the Lord, we shall be able to make our lives count, both now and in the future, as we allow ourselves to become more and more the instruments of His kingdom. You'll recall that St. Philip caught up in the drama of the pre-crucifixion events after Jesus had said he was going away he, he cried Lord whither do you go how shall we follow you how shall we know the ways Jesus response was why do you ask me how shall we know the way I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. And it is even so today. We may try the door of morality and self-assertion, or we may try the door of superiority, which masks our basing sense of inferiority. Yet these will not suffice for us. It is to the awkward, tiny, gnarled door of faith that we are called. Here, those we must ask, seek, and knock. To follow this Jesus whom we serve takes humility. Yet that is the very livery of the Son of God. To follow our Savior also requires openness. For, like the miracle of the loaves and fishes, he wants to provide for us, and we must be willing not only to give and do for Him, but to let Him provide for our wants also. To follow this glorified Redeemer of ours necessitates a willingness to be identified totally with Him, both in the Gethsemane and the glory, both in the crucifixion and in the celestial realms as well. Father, said he, I will that they whom you have given me be with me where I am, that they may see and share my glory, which was mine, before the world was made. There is an eternal privilege in all of this. There is a way for man to rise to that sublime abode, an offering and a sacrifice a Holy Spirit's energies, an advocate with God. These prepare us for the sight of holiness above. The sons of ignorance and night may dwell in that celestial light through an eternal love. Right now, as a church, we are in a season of change. But be assured of this, that God who loves us doesn't change and that he will provide us with the power to work together to grow together and to make the future as blessed as the past let us pray our Lord God you lead your children as a shepherd leads a flock care for our hurts of past and present open our hearts to the wonder of your love 
Teach us to trust you in all our tomorrows. Grant, our gracious and good Father, that we may be so enlarged by faith and enabled by your grace, that trusting only in your guidance, we may live this day in peace and safety, and face our tomorrows without fear. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In this journey, we should dare to believe. We are assigned to serve our Savior by being faithful for Him. That bestowing is given and supported by God Himself. We do not stay faithful with money or jewels, for faithfulness without peace is temporal but peace along with faithfulness is eternal. We live our lives being inspired to create a faithful heart or temple for the Holy Spirit who is also Jesus Christ to twist in his direction for his living needs. We serve with prayer, love, relief of sorrow of others and honest relations. We can prevail by believing with positivity, motivation, strength, and good-natured discipleship to the eternal. We need not grow sad in living faithful, even though age may sadden or scare us, and the passing years sentence us to limitations in our health and lassitude of mind. May our Savior, Jesus Christ, grant to each of us the belief in the disciples directions to endure in happiness and strength to continue in every good work these thoughts are all for the congregation of this channel with my deepest respect and my prayers that they may strengthen our happiness our faith and uplift our hearts are you ready to dare to believe follow God's teachings and let him guide your faith Adonai Nisi the Lord is our banner. Remember, if you like these videos, please click on the red subscribe button below and the bell for more. God's blessings be upon this message and us all.